Hello my friends, the counterattack from the Ukrainian army starts very soon because we obtain the most part of the weaponry. Still we are waiting for something, but about the tanks and armored vehicles, we almost got everything. And this picture was taken in Ukraine, today it was published, so here we have the martyr armor vehicle from the Germany side. Here I don't really know what is that, maybe Ukrainian flag, it means that it's the Ukrainian armored vehicle, looks like a big defender. Maybe it is the Cossack armored vehicle, not sure from this perspective. But what is interesting is here. Thank you, United Kingdom, for providing the Challenger 2 tanks to Ukraine. And as you can see, they already have arrived. And just a couple of days ago, we got the information that uh, our soldiers successfully passed the training to operate those tanks. It is one of the best tanks out there. I did the video about the Challenger 2 and Leopard 2. You're very welcome to check it out on my channel and still for me it's hard to say whether this tank has the extra armor plate on the forward to bottom part of the base because the standard version could be potentially penetrated by the Russian tanks I think we have quite a nice modification after all we have extra systems and machine guns and those devices for the smoke I think and also to intercept rockets those could be I'm not really military expert in Challenger 2 tanks but this one is not the base modification and on the left here you can see the striker armored vehicle from the United States of America and those are also very sophisticated unfortunately for the summer and spring campaign will not have the Abrams tanks they will arrive a little bit later more closer to the autumn as I say to you, the infrastructure to maintain those tanks is quite sophisticated and in this short period of time we were not able to build it with our Western allies from the United States. But for sure we're gonna get Abrams from the United States and maybe in that case we're gonna extend our counterattack that is planned for the late spring. And I published this photo on my Telegram and some people ask about this flag. For me I wasn't able to find the information about it so if you know what is that maybe it's some sort of the regiment over here the airborne division and on the back there's the military track that i think is the united states made but not sure my friends because on the united states uh, made tracks the lights are in different positions so they are on the bumper we call it and tell me about the symbol of this regiment because i tried to search but couldn't find it not just those countries support ukraine we have many other allies who also send the tanks and armor recos to ukrainian army so totally i think now we have around 100 tanks plus many of the armored vehicles yeah the bad news is that we'll not have the abrams tanks for the spring and summer campaigns but we'll have bradley's martyrs are also great and we have around 40 units already in ukrainian army but i think bradley's are more versatile and with the proper armor they fit perfectly for the urban fighting environment and what about russians uh, they have tiger cars in their army the off-road cars and also off-road tracks by the way you can see here that there was some sort of the damage but it's not just one case there was the other one you can see those vehicles are quite big and heavy and clumsy and before fighting on those vehicles they should train to drive them properly so there was the collision and five tracks got damaged and it happened on the carriage bridge i think it's no go for the car on the right you can see it is severely damaged over here plus you can see how the wheel is displaced wow it's just terrible so for sure this vehicle should be sent for repairs and this one i think it may continue the way to support russians on the front line and still you can see that russia uses the carriage bridge for the support of the forces even though the railway part is not working but because they cannot use trains this happens more interesting news we got the information from the resource called intelligence online that france wants to send 40 of the mirage 2000-9 airplanes to ukraine but firstly they need to get them from the united arab emirates so i think it will take few months for the ukrainian army to get those at least from the moment that they will go to france and also we need infrastructure and supplies for them we need spare parts we need fuel we need maintenance and moreover we need training not just for the pilots but also for technicians 
So it's not the easy task to obtain and to apply the Western-made jets into Ukrainian army. It was much easier with MiGs because we have the infrastructure for those airplanes and also our pilots were trained to fly those. But I'm really happy about those news. I hope that it's truth. And while I'm recording this video, there is the massive drone attack on Ukraine again. Unfortunately, two of the big explosions were reported in Kyiv and many other cities. So this was filmed in Kyiv. I cannot show you the video, but I can just skip a little bit. So you see how Shahid drone aimed somewhere. As Klitschko, the mayor of the Kyiv, says that the drone hit some sort of the shop out there. And it's not looking good at all. And Russia obtains the Shahid drones as exchange for technologies and also military supplies to the Iranian side. They do not supply shells or anything. They provide, as I say to you, technologies that Iran may use to produce their own weaponry. And this Shahid drone was just hit in the skies, so this is the good one. By the way, if you want to know how ordinary people cope with the blackouts and then their buildings or houses were severely damaged by the Russian rockets, I highly recommend you to check out the channel of my friends, of Evgeny Travnikov and his wife Irene. It's called the UA Courage and they film the real stuff from the place and they live in this some sort of the building that lost couple of the stories because of the Russian attack and the huge fire. And because of Evgeny, I actually started to write motorcycles back in 2007. So yes, he's my close friend and I hope this year finally they will have the help from the government to rebuild their building because it's just not possible to live there for two years consecutive. So here's probably the answer for the question where are those funds spent that are coming to Ukraine from many of the countries and international institutions. We need to invest in army, we need to rebuild the buildings, the houses for people and also we need to invest in Ukrainian economy just not to let it to collapse. So what my friend did, they bought the very cheap and very old Mercedes and he converted it into the power station by putting the big generator inside the trunk and also they installed the sterling on this car. So then he goes to his garage, he just plug in this Mercedes into the garage and then he goes home, he plugs in everything, internet and electricity to his flat. Interesting solution and I'm glad that Starlink was useful. So I'm gonna leave the links for their latest video and for their channel. You are very welcome to visit it and check it out. By the way, Evgeny got the real Shahid engine and they made the review of that one, disassembling and showing the construction. If you are interested in that, also you may follow their channel. And yes, really they have the spare parts from Japan, Korea and from the European Union. My friends, again, I just want to show you the Russian propaganda. For that, I think I should turn on the sound. So you can see it's some sort of the Ukrainian defense car. You can hear the sound of voice of the very small child. And the mom is driving the car and those guys, they're just stopping here. Well, what can I say that they were in the car wearing those masks, which is kind of unusual. You usually wear them, then you need to cover your identity or just because of the dust and other stuff. But he just left the car just straight away without any action to put his mask on. So the mask was on the soldier before he stops. And I will not show you the full video, just the parts of it. So he starts to blame the lady that she drives mad. She just overtook their convoy. She tried to hit the car in a convoy. So he's really mad on her and the child was very upset and also worried so there are no English subtitles but this dialogue is very strange as for me because it was exaggerated and it was stressed by the soldier so much and she was coping correctly but you know but after all soldiers did couple of shots into the ground and actually left the scene <laughs> on their track and this is Volkswagen Amarok and we do have those in Ukrainian army presented by volunteers. But as it was reported by our car enthusiasts in the Ukrainian group, the top part of that vehicle is the custom made and made only in Russia with this spoiler. 
we don't have them for sale in ukraine so for sure it was the russian car plus we have the detailed information from the satellite saying that it's the same place even the same picture of the trees out there and the point is near to donetsk between donetsk and makivka so it was the hoax by the russian propaganda and i would say very poorly played the great news for the ukrainian hero soldier ruslan the call sign predator he finally obtain the rifle he wanted here it is <laughs> and general commander zaluzhny gave it as the present so if you have it as the present you can keep it but if you are 21 as ruslan you cannot buy it i think it is the ar-15 and just to remind you this guy alone was able to stop the russian assault on his positions and destroying btr eliminating many of the russian invaders he was wounded, but it was the light one, so he continued to serve in Ukrainian army. Why he wanted this Western-made rifle? Because throughout the defense, his AK-74 jammed two times. And this one, I think, is more reliable. Right, let's go to Bakhmut. Russia continued to perform their assaults, mostly from the south over here and over here. Here it's not really successful, but this vector, they got some sort of the territory under their control. For the latest update, we don't have on a deep state, but I would say that they have took a couple of the quarrels over here. And let's zoom in. I'm gonna show you, because deep state already updated this information on their military map in telegram but not yet updated on the server so they moved like that i think so this is the screen from their telegram you can see this hub over here it wasn't like that yesterday and they use the public information that is posted in social media some of the photos tiktoks and other stuff that the russian soldiers or ukrainian soldiers film near to the front lines so I don't think that they're close to the city center. They are in the city center. And fortunately, we were able to withdraw our forces from that place. And now they're on the western side of the city. And still our general command says that it's early to evacuate, mainly because we have some sort of the supply lines under our control. First of all, this main road, but it's very tricky to supply supplies to the Bakhmut city using that one because it's under the constant shelling by the Russian artillery. But the secondary roads are more safe and the one that we mainly use is in Hromove. It basically goes in parallel with that uh, big road, but a little bit closer to the north and to the Chasov Yar. And as for the Chasov Yar, there is the big base of the Ukrainian forces. We have lots of the regiments and battalions that are constantly changing the soldiers who got wounded or who got tired fighting against Russians in Bakhmut. So still not a big change for today in that area. We see that Russia bogged down, even though they used lots of resources even though Prigozhin said that Shoigu sent some reinforcements for the flanks because he afraid that Ukraine may perform the counterattack to Kleshivka and towards Yahidne and Krasnohora, cutting Russians away from their supplies. So probably Russia may send some of the backup sources uh, to those flanks on the north and on the south. But for us, it's better to keep that city as long as possible because otherwise Russia would move closer to the biggest uh, residential areas like in Slavansk and Kramatorsk. And we are waiting for the counterattack that will happen for sure from the Ukrainian side. And based on the weaponry that we got from our Western lines, it may happen in a few weeks. Like three or maximum four, because we already have the trained crews for the tanks, armored vehicles. The question is whether the airplanes will be on time from Poland and Slovakia. But we know that they've started the transfer of the airplanes and we got first four mix from Slovakia. Other than that, I think we are fully ready for it. And also we need to wait for the better weather, for the soil to be more robust. And do you know where should we go? Because Russia built, still built the defense lines on the south. Yes, uh, those lines are not really nice, but they are defense lines. And according to some analytics, Ukraine may start the counterattack in a very unexpected place.
as for me quite an expected place is over here at the same achievement so to go to crimea that's our main goal there we have the chance to start the collapse of the russian regime and that is how we may finish this war i think we have just one chance for it about Avdivka over here, there are minor changes and basically Ukraine did successful counterattacks. We pushed the Russian regular forces away from the city over here and over here. So it's great. At least we have some sort of the good news from the front lines. Actually, news are in general good. We are causing Russia severe losses, but at the same time, we also have losses, especially in Bakhmut. Then the urban fighting is ongoing. It's very hard to keep the pace, not only for offensive side, but also for defense. And unfortunately, we have, as I say to you, the losses up to 200 soldiers per day over there, according to the international journalists. But I think that it will not be like that for a very long time because Russia would be forced to send their forces to the more vulnerable areas, for example, where Ukraine will start the counterattack. And we're gonna witness it with you, my friends. I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. And now if you want to support my job, just go to the link in the video description just below you may support me also on patreon and the sponsorship on youtube channel where you may get access for my podcast and regular live streams by the way tomorrow i'll have the live stream for the sponsors on my private telegram channel my friends i wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time